we're leaving Michigan today. It's bittersweet. It's been a great two and a half weeks, but um, we've only got about five weeks to get to Seattle, and there's a lot we want to see and do between here and there. So we've been moving pretty quickly, staying no longer than two days in most places, which for us is uncommon. So. Right. Exactly. We have fit a lot in in the time we've had here in Michigan, but we've also had to cut some things from our uh, list of things that we had wanted to see. So that's all right, just gives us something to come back for. Uh, but we are headed into Wisconsin today, new state. to Wisconsin and we have stopped in Ashland Wisconsin which is popular because of the Apostle Islands yeah um, Bayfield is actually a town about half an hour north of here yep. that you can do a kayak trip from or take a ferry over and explore the Apostle Islands which we would be totally interested in doing except and you wouldn't know it based on how beautiful it is this evening um, but the weather's turning pretty tomorrow it's going to be rainy and yeah. cold and actually for the next couple of days it's supposed to be a little bit ugly so right exactly not the kind of weather that you want to be out on the water in right. so i think we're only going to spend one night in wisconsin unfortunately yeah we're just flying through it <laughs> there are um some other recommendations um, that have been given to us in Wisconsin, but they're just too far south and not on our route. Right. So we're gonna have to do another another route, another year that includes more of Wisconsin. We wanna hit some of the center states anyway, like Nebraska, areas like that. So we have plenty of reason to come back up here and, right. and check all these states out, Illinois, Wisconsin, Nebraska, all those kind of states. And not to mention, I mean, there is a lot that we chose to not do in Michigan. In Michigan even that we wanted to do copper point isle royale a national park would be nice to to see but there's only so much time it's hard to to believe that when all you do is travel full time how can there not be enough time it always comes up it seems like there's always an obligation or always some place we have to get to so right and not that we are disappointed by that in any way it's just it's just the way the life is that's know? it that's life um so yeah we're enjoying our one night in wisconsin though thankfully yes. the one day that we have to spend here is absolutely beautiful this and we're a great little campground i think it's a county park it's either a county city park or, or county a city park. park do you remember uh, what it's, it's called it's called Crier, K-R-E-H-E-R. -E -E it's $30 a night for electric and water. Yep. Um, and it's just a really beautiful setting, really well-maintained city park. Great views, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. All right, well, leaving Wisconsin today, and this weather is why we're not going to the Apostle Islands. It's just a dreary, overcast, kind of ugly day, but totally bummed to be missing it. They've got um, sea caves there that you can kayak into and it just sounds like a blast um, in the winter uh, in certain years if the lake freezes solid enough you can actually hike out to the sea caves that have become ice caves and that is supposed to be really something to see so i don't know if i could handle the cold but man i would love to come back one winter um, and explore the ice caves but uh, we're getting hitched up and getting ready to go, so we will be leaving Wisconsin. We did spend a night here, so we get to check it off the list, uh, but headed into Minnesota today. Sorry, Wisconsin, we definitely want to spend more time here um, another time. <music> We made it to Minnesota, a new state today. 
Uh, we're staying in Duluth, Minnesota at a different type of campground. It's actually a marina that has about 30 camp spots. It's called Lake something <laughs> Boat Basin, Lakehead Boat Basin. It's about $37 a night for water and electric. They do have full hookup sites for maybe $5 more. Um, it is within a short walking distance of the lift bridge, which is a really unique bridge that brings you into kind of a downtown area in Duluth. Uh, so it's a great location. It's just a parking lot, but it's a great location for just being able to walk and see cool things. Um, so yeah, really enjoying this park, but today we are actually going to drive and take the North Shore Drive um, up the North Shore of Lake Superior and get back into nature for the day. Come to Gooseberry Falls State Park about an hour north of Duluth. Some hiking trails here and a waterfall to, to check out. water goes over the falls. Pretty cool lookout point for sure. Uh, we're going to head to the middle and lower falls now. So that's a wrap here at the Gooseberry Falls State Park. Uh, pretty cool little trail. Short little walk on a paved trail, handicap accessible to the upper falls anyway. Depending on how adventurous you're feeling, if you want to, you can climb out on the rocks and basically get right on top of or into the falls. Right. Um, but there are paved trails throughout that would allow anybody to access it. So uh, really amazing place. And best of all, it was completely free. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> well, we were going to go check out another state park just half an hour down the road. I think it was called Tentagouche State Park. <laughs> Probably butchering that name. Um, but it's raining again. <laughs> this rain! So, yeah. We are calling it a day, but super glad we got to see Gooseberry Falls. That place was really cool. So, and a nice drive up from the loose. It is what it is. <laughs> Glad we got to at least do one of the things on our list today. Yep. 
Well, we made it back from the rainy drive home and uh, it's cleared up. So we're taking advantage of the beautiful evening that we have and walking across the lift bridge and into, I don't know, would you call it a downtown? They have bars and eateries and uh, it's right on the canal that comes under the bridge, so. Yeah, it's just a real neat area. Yeah, so. it's a real cool little little area, so. We're gonna go check it out, see if we can get some adult beverages, maybe. Yeah, sit outside maybe and have a cocktail or two. We're walking. <laughs> <laughs> just enjoy the evening. Exactly. So the other day TJ was under the van tinkering around doing what TJ does and noticed that the receiver for the hitch had a crack. So we've ordered a new receiver um, and had it delivered here to Duluth. It just came in today and we're going to get that installed before we hit the road. It was after checkout time at the campground and someone was waiting to get into our spot. So the campground was really helpful and has allowed us to move into this overflow parking area here uh, where we can spend the next however long, hopefully just an hour or so, to take off the old hitch receiver and put on the new one. <laughs> Instructions say to torque it to 110 foot pounds. easy install. Hopefully we won't have any more issues. <laughs> Alright, so this is the old hitch that came off. So yep. what, what was wrong with it? So it's the old hitch. It is a class 4 hitch, so it's not that it was underrated for what we're towing. 
Uh, but it is 18 years old, 19 years old. So it it's had a pretty long life, and you know, with towing a trailer with with bumps and the crappy roads that we drive on, it's going to put some wear on it. But anyway, when I was crawling around under the van, I noticed this crack over here. It's about that long, and you can actually see light through it. Yeah, I'm seeing that. So it's pretty bad that one. And then it was also starting to do the same thing on the other side. The other one's not quite all the way through, but it's cracked and, you know, I just envision this whole piece tearing off at some point and our trailer flying down a road and hurting us and hurting a lot of people. So. Definitely a good, I guess, testimony for checking your equipment regularly. Don't just assume that everything is Hunky dory. Yep. Even on brand new trucks, nuts and bolts come loose, things rattle, shake loose, and and there are defects sometimes. So, you know, you want to check these things, especially if you tow a lot or you know you're on the road a lot. So. Alright, all hitched up and towing with our new receiver. Yep, it hasn't fallen off yet. <laughs> hey, good catch on finding that crack. High five. This is the only time she high fives me for being <laughs> being over prepared. Yeah, so usually TJ overreacts and perhaps sometimes it's, spends money unnecessarily. In my opinion, it's not an overreaction. It's over preparing. It's getting ahead of problems. Okay, that's fair. I just think he likes to spend money. <laughs> but this not, not on trailer hitches, I promise you that. This time it was absolutely warranted. That crack is, it was scary. It was really big, much bigger than I thought it would be. So we just have one last stop. We've got to recycle this hitch um, and then we're headed out of Duluth. Keep following along. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.